And uh, specifically, I have Ryzen, uh, who you mentioned, as uh, a good example, as they're in the process of adding a new vehicle to its fleet called Mobile Onset Network as a Service Unit, NAS. You know, it reminds me of the uh, 60s psychedelic band with uh, Todd Rundgren. Um, and specifically, it's uh, also uh, known as Cell on Wheels or COWs and sell on light trucks or colts. So these are handy acronyms to help people remember <laughs> what is the, the technology involved here. And it's using radio access tech to provide temporary network connectivity at venues or during natural disasters. Public safety is always you know, a top priority. And the, so the mobile onsite NAS is basically a small data center on a small trailer. So this is something that I think is very important, or I should say really a complete data center on a small trailer. I think that's a more apt description. And so fundamentally, it's just that it's a small portable edge based network that Verizon's using as a service to provide, again, uh, what you're talking about, a combination of capabilities, 5G, edge compute security, and of course, all important connectivity to these remote locations that quite simply uh, warrant these services. And so, Todd, you know, what are your expectations for you know what Verizon is doing here? What about cows, colts? <laughs> what is going on in terms of you know what's standing out here? Well, I think the cows and colts have been around for a while. Those have been around for I don't know, maybe five to ten years, I think. Um, and they are they're the things that when you go to a big football game or a World Series game or a Super Bowl game, and there's a hundred thousand people and all those local. Um, uh, uh, telecom communications networks are overloaded. This is where they bring these in to try to bolster it, to add more capacity. And they're brilliant. They're also great because they can be brought in when there's a natural disaster, when there's hurricanes in Florida and massive damage and all the lines are down, or when there's you know uh, tornadoes in, in the plains and all over the place. These things are great. What the new NAS is going to do is provide even more capabilities because this isn't just cells on wheels. This is networks on wheels. This is network services that they're going to be able to expand you and connect to those cells on wheels and those cells on light trucks, the, the cows and colts. This is going to broaden this whole entire thing and give it even more capabilities. Um, and Verizon's has a, they just deployed their first deployment of this thing, a portable 10 foot trailer at their customer's facility, Lockheed Martin in Waterton, Colorado. They just put this mobile onsite NAS um, to build, to be able to have a private network, private mech, SD-WAN, and satellite connectivity to the customer locations. That's huge. That's bringing something, instead of having to sit there and build it for months or years or however long, months, weeks, they can just bring it in. They roll it in. It can be used as a mobile lab, as a service to test enterprise applications and devices on a 5G standalone network. If you want to see what the capacity is or see if you can do something, Roll this in, have a bunch of them, Roll, have them in different parts of the country. Put them in before you build it, make sure it works or make sure it, it fits the needs. This is a great, uh, almost a laboratory on wheels for them. I think this is great. And this mobile on-site NAS, it can communicate to the cloud for remote management and monitoring, but the applications all live locally at the edge-based system. Um, that to me is really a big deal because now they can bring in all this extra connectivity, they can bring in all this extra monitoring and management, and then all those applications are already there. You're now supplementing them. You're supplementing what you already have. Maybe you weren't able to do something. Bringing in something like this can show you, wow, now we can do that. I, I think these are huge, I really do. Um, and I wanted to say one other thing. While the mobile on-site NAS is using a satellite connection at Lockheed Martin, um, it also could use a wireless or wired connection as well. So again, it's incredibly flexible. Whatever you need, wherever you need it, what do you have? Do you have access to satellite? Do you have access to whatever? Use what you have. Um, and for this deployment, the mobile on-site NAS is going to be collecting sensor data and video and assist in analysis of network operations. I, I just think this is huge. This is a great thing. And again, they've got this at Verizon the others, if this works, are going to follow. This is this is the kind of innovation Verizon's doing with this particular thing. This could be used for any number of, of use cases. It could be surveying. It could be farming, bridge inspections, mine inspections. I mean, it could be anything. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly, Todd. In fact, uh, I think it does have 
global implications. To your point about you know uh, natural disasters, public safety, um, what comes to mind are the tragedies such as the earthquake that struck in Morocco and the floods that hit Libya. And clearly, uh, cult and uh, cal uh, technology would be of most applicable to those situations because we don't know when it uh, can hit. It's you re have to have that mobility built in, that flexibility, that uh, d being able to fundamentally deliver a complete data center to that site uh, on a uh, really uh, a on an ad hoc basis, but on an emergency basis. So this well, is I, important. I I never thought I was going to say this in this recording, but today, four years and four days from 9-11, th had these things been available? Had these capabilities been available? Do you remember the horrific telecom um, communications that happened in New York City that day? Because so many of the antennas and things were on top of the World Trade Center and they were destroyed. And so people couldn't communicate. They were texting because that worked. This is exactly the kind of thing for a disaster, a natural disaster. You know, I mean, I hate to bring up terrorist attacks, but this is a way of communicating, bolstering communications when communications are impaired in a big way. So I think this is for all kinds of uses, just giant. And, you know, these telecom companies, Verizon, DT, others, they're doing amazing things to give us capabilities that are so important. I really think this is a big deal. So, right. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, we have some uh, lessons learned and now, you know, we've taken steps to make, you know, the public safety aspect a paramount so that it's less vulnerable to uh, these types of disasters. And on that important note, thank you so much, Todd, for joining our today. And uh, to uh, the viewing audience out there, we certainly appreciate you taking the time uh, to listen to our views on what's going on in uh, the 5G world. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the 5G Factor. And uh, with that, everyone, have a great 5G day. Thank you. Thanks again for having me, Ron. Thank you. You bet.